homebrewers, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic one. So, we've, we've already done this video. I've already drank some wine, but it was completely garbage because it was all out of focus and uh, a little bit's okay, you know, sort of, you can live with it. But if the whole thing is just like watching it with your eyes crossed, not so good. So we're gonna start again. So, one year ago, I made a simple blackberry wine. You know, we, we've we made blackberry wine in the past and it's, um, yeah, it takes a lot of blackberries. The more blackberries you have, the better your wine is. I mean, the ideal is 100% blackberries, just all the juice, but that takes a huge amount of blackberries to get, well, the, the fabled fantastic wine. And it's true, it makes a great wine. So we wanted to try and make an easier version. So we did. So the links to those videos are at the top there, as well as some of the other Blackberry wine videos, because, well, yeah, it's Blackberry wine. So we ended up with six of these shiny bottles of Blackberry wine. Some of them oaked, some of them not. Now I've given away one of these bottles before I tried it, because I was pretty sure you'd get something not too bad. I mean, the, the basis is good. And uh, I also did some oaked ones. So the one we're going to be trying today is the oaked ones because that's the ones I have. So I've already gone ahead and poured myself a glass of wine because, well, I've already done this video. So uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, now I am going to be completely honest with you. The first time you open it and give it a whiff, you know, as you do, you stick your nose in the bottle. Is it any good? It smells kind of oaky and flat. Now this is because, well, it is a homebrew product and it is a wine. It is not a commercial wine. It is a homemade wine, like old school wine. If you know anything about old wine, you need to oxygenate it. You need to leave it to air. You know, fancy wines. This is technically brewed like a fancy wine. It's not, it's easy, but, Letting the, letting the oxygen get to your wine, because it's been in that bottle all that time, it brings out those flavors that you want in a bottle of wine. That's why you air wine. Now, if you're just going to drink a glass, you know, pour your glass and swell it around, leave it on the side, do whatever you do, just leave it for a few minutes, and it will turn from flat and slightly oaky into this, which is... Oh, deep, beautiful berries. Now, <laughs> sounds a bit over the top. It's true, you're just like, well, how does leaving wine out? Well, you know carafts of wine, jugs. You pour your wine into a jug and that oxygenates it and makes it quicker to drink. So if you're gonna have a few glasses, you might as well dump the bottle in a jug and be good. Or a pint glass, anyway. I'm using a wine glass because I'm classy. So, after it's been aired for a few minutes, how does it smell? Oh, so it has, the oak smell dies off because, you know, that's the prominent one. It smells berry-ish. It's berry, zingy. It's got hints of wine in it. I mean, it is, smells pretty damn good considering how easy this is to make so i'm gonna try some oh the things i do for you guys oh so mm. that is nice so it has got a rich sort of mouthfeel. It's drying because of the tannins in there and a bit of the oak as well. It's got blackberries. It's got a berry taste, sort of red berries, and then the aftertaste is blackberries. I mean, it is, I wouldn't say it is akin to the previous one where it was eight kilos of blackberries, but for something that you could do in less than an afternoon, that's pretty damn good. Oh, I mean, you know, Merlots normally have berry notes in them, but this is made with berries. It has 
the tannic edge just enough just to dry your mouth slightly make it salivate you've got the berry hints to it none of this comes out until you leave it to rest so uh, if you're impatient you know it's gonna taste flat now the oak don't really taste a lot of the oakiness in there. I know it's in there because the drying, that drying salivation or oh, preparation type thing. It is actually a pretty nice wine considering how easy it was to make. Now I could say, you know, go on. It was great with red meats and things like that. And it's like, it's good with it, whatever you want to drink it with. It's pretty damn good. Now, I do get asked a question quite a lot because, as you know, if I can avoid it, I don't use preservatives in my wines or ciders and beer. You don't use preservatives anyway. But um, basically everything, I try and keep all chemical stuff out there. It's not like a, a hippy-dippy thing. It's just I don't like the taste. I can taste it because I've been making homebrew this way for so long. Now, this bottle of wine actually has... Well, it's been there for a year, um, there's no mold, there's no nothing, it's, it's a good bottle of wine. Now, it is actually coloured, discoloured the bottle um, with the red wine goodness. It actually is light green and see-through here and then it has, well, basically like a very strong glaze to it. That is partially because, well, one, it's, it's pretty dark. <laughs> As you can see, you can't see through it. It is a bit murky because we didn't use pectolase. Because, well, red wines, you don't need pectolase. And this is no exception. I mean, it has a beautiful purple coloring to it. Nom, 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 nom. Very nice. It is dark. I'm going to say pendulous because I can't help myself. But it's dark. It's fruity. It's got enough tanning in there. Just enough. Mm. I mean, considering it took a year to age, I mean, we could have done it at six months, but hey, why not give it the best chance it's got? I really like it. I mean, it's not like a craft wine. This is a uh, slightly better than a table wine. You know, it's more than a five pound bottle of wine, but at the same time, it's not a 50 pound bottle of wine. In the middle. Hmm, not bad for like three, four pounds worth of ingredients to make a gallon. Really quite pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. Right, so I've poured myself another glass because of course I'm going to. It tastes pretty damn good for what it is. Still needs a little bit more oxygenation. Anyway, so I know some of you out there do not like dry wines. Some of you like fruit wines, fruity wines. So um, here's a simple trick that you can do with even store-bought wine. Buy a cheap bottle of Plunk and go, ooh, that's amazingly dry or a bit flat. It tastes a little bit flat now. So what you can do is grab your sweetener of choice, whether it be sugar or honey. I mean, if that's up to you, I'm going to add a bit of sucralose sweetener, which came from Aldi. Got myself a little spoon. Oh, it feels wrong doing this, but it is a cheat how to make rubbish wine taste a little bit nicer. So I've added it into my wine. I really like dry wine, so you can see why I've got that face of, <laughs> but it's only a glass. And you can literally do this, it oxygenates it. It does all sorts with it. Now, the great thing about sweet wines is you can drink them quicker. Get rid of that. Ah. Ah. I think I need to sneeze. No, I just have an itchy nose. So, um, same wine. A little bit of stirring. Oh, well, look a bit weird. But a little bit of sweetener added into it. Let's give it a go. You can add sugar, like I said, whatever you want. Ooh, and it changes the profile of the wine almost instantaneously, adding a little bit of sweetness to it. So this was a nice wine before. I mean, it's still a nice wine, but 
Adding the sweetness to it will bring out more of the fruity flavors. And it has. I only used a little bit of sweetener considering, uh, considering I'm not a great fan of sweetener either. Does the job. Oh, so now it is a bit more rich. It's a bit more robust and rounded. Those berry flavors have been enhanced. Ooh. The, the trick is, is to balance between sweetness, dryness, and tannins. That is, uh, that is the main problem every homebrewer have, especially if you have no basis to work from. Like, I still like this dry, but I can see the appeal to adding a little bit of sweetener back into it. Those berry flavors are a little bit more in the forefront. The tannin is died down a little bit. I don't get the same drying taste, you know, the drying tannic taste. Now it's very, very mild. Balance. Hmm. And because you've added sweetness to it, you know, every, the balance has changed. It's sort of a sliding scale between sweet, dried tannins, acids. It all changes depending on well, what you do. So yeah. Basically, you can modify your wine as much as you like, and you end up with something that's pretty good either way. I mean, the sweeter your wine is, the quicker you can drink it, but the sweeter it tastes and the less like a store-bought wine you make. But, yeah, a little bit of, tiny bit of sweetener to it. Brings those berry notes more to the forefront, takes away the tannin a bit and changes the acids a little bit, which is weird. It tastes, this now tastes more like a commercial wine. I mean, it tasted like one before, but now it's even more like something you would buy in a shop. It's food for thought, guys, because, well, you can do whatever you want with your own homebrew or stuff you buy in the shop if you can't be bothered to brew it. There's no rules. Do whatever you like. It's not wrong, as long as you like it. So, uh, yeah, added some sweetener to it, changed the flavor profile, and you can just tinker away as you like. But uh, I like, I prefer it dry with a bit of, a bit of waiting time. Still, perfectly drinkable. Mm. So guys, that is, uh, that's the video. I've enjoyed doing this many times. I've nearly finished a bottle of wine already. I've only got one more glass left. <gasps> so, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones. You know, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. But most importantly, carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.